Making better control objects doesn't only mean creating better looking shapes, but doing more with less shapes. I'm going to talk about some of the ways you can maximize the efficiency of your controllers and a couple tricks you can do with a parent command. So unless you've never opened Maya before, you're probably familiar with what parenting and instancing are all about. You know, I can grab this NURBS object, which I've named Baby, grab this cube, hit P, and the cube becomes the parent of the object. I can make an instance uh, the standard way by going to Edit, Duplicate Special, and hitting Instance and Duplicating Special, and you can see what that does. Pretty straightforward. I can also uh, parent some objects together by using the parent command and a semicolon. But let's get tricky and add dash add. Let's do it a couple more times. Now we've got something interesting happening. It's similar to an instance, but with a different behavior. And since this uh, NURB circle is live, I can go in here and we can mess around with uh, the shape attributes. So let's talk about building better NURBS curves for animation controllers. I'm fond of this Golf T controller because it's simple, it's visible from any angle, and it points to the part of the rig that you're controlling. So let's talk about how we put this together. I'm going to create a NURBS circle on the grid. And I'm going to make a, uh, you know, a line. Just going to grid snap that. Rotate this up. Grab my NURBS circle. And I'm going to uh, curve snap it here. Another neat thing you can do with parenting is you can parent shapes to objects. And that's what we're going to do now. So freeze the transforms. Zero it all out. And uh, you can delete the history too if you want to. And now to select the shape, which is this NURB circle shape, I'm just going to tap down. So I've got the shape selected, and I'm going to add select the other shape. And in this case, it doesn't matter which order you do it in. So I have a shape and an object selected, and this time I'm going to type in parent-r-s. Uh, dash R uh, is for relative, and dash S is for shape, when you parent shapes. If you're not familiar with uh, this, don't worry about it too much. Just remember, it's parent dash R dash S. Let's run that and see what we get. And you can see that the shapes have gone over here. It's got two shape nodes now. And you can, you can rename these into something that's a little cleaner. And the important thing uh, to remember, when you do this shape parenting, is that you're going to leave an empty object node behind. Just delete it. And you're left with one object, and you got your golf tee. So here's some examples of the types of shapes you can build. Easier than making complex single strings of NURBS curves, you can just combine all the shapes into one object using parent-r-s. Another thing you can do is combine shapes that have active input connections. You can get some pretty cool behaviors when you do this, but the idea is to aid in the clarity of the rig and to do more with less controls. One common annoyance I have with rigs is where the IK switchers are located. Sometimes they'll be floating in space as a separate object, sometimes you assess them by a menu, or sometimes they're limited to just the IK controller. Now, I don't like hunting for switches, so here's my way to make things simple. So here's an IKFK skeleton. I've already made a switch for it and I've put it in this joint here, right? But uh, you know, what if I'm working on the IK and I want to make a switch? Well I have to change what object I'm working on and, and do the switch, right? Let's try something different. I'm going to create a locator. And I'm going to rename the shape switcher. Alright. Uh, now what I want to do is add an attribute to the shape. So grab the object tap down. I'm going to go to modify, add attribute, and I'm going to call this my IKFK. It's going to be a float. I'm going to do 0, 1, 0, and OK. So there we go. I'm also going to get rid of these things because I don't need them. Grab them, and we're going to lock and hide them. So we're only left with the IKFK. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect 
uh, this value to the switcher that I've already created. So I'm going to open up the connection editor and load the shape into the left hand side and I'm going to load this guy into the right and just connect IKFK to the switch. And it's jumped so I'm going to bring this back to 0 0.5 so that we can see what we're doing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want one of these controls in every single one of these joints. So what we do is we tap down to get to the shape. I tap to say this IK handle here and what I'm going to type in is parent add shape and that's going to add an instance of the shape to that object. So let's run that. There we go. Let's just keep adding. What I'm doing here is I'm just selecting new objects and hitting G for repeat last command. Uh, but essentially, if you were going to do it the hard way, one by one, select your object, go down to the shape, and then select your uh, parent object, and run the command, parent-add-s. So there's a problem with this setup in that now we seem to have a bunch of locators everywhere. Well, well I don't want that, so I'm going to go back to my, my original locator, I tap down, and I want to hide this. So I'm going to go to the uh, channel control and we're going to find visibility down at the bottom. I'm going to bring that out. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to lock it. Now our locators are all invisible and if we grab any of these shapes we see we've got the controller in there. And there's one last thing to do. That's grab our original locator which is invisible and delete it. Now I can switch the IK from any part of the arm. It's a bit uh, speedier than switching objects and a lot cleaner than having a separate controller just for switching. You can put other types of controls into an instance shape node too. Uh, here's a simple bottle rig with a level of detail controls accessible from any part of the main rig. So finally, this arm rig has the IK switcher from every FK and IK controller. Not only that, the finger controls are accessible from both the IK and the FK wrist. Remember, these aren't separate controllers, they're instance shapes. So we eliminate control objects for the IKFK switcher and for fingers. But if you really want implicit control over the fingers, let's turn on Give Me Detail Now. And let's get in there. Just look at those nice looking control objects. And that is using these parent commands to make better animation controls.